welcome to Sonic Dorms. And on today's show, I have none other than Kendra Tolstad. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Yeah, you are. Kendra All right. Tolstad. And just to let you know, she is the bassist of this particular duo. And on the other end, I have Toria Beck, who is the guitarist, yeah. also the vocalist of this uh, <laughs> duo. And they go by the name of Dreadlight. And I love them. They're from Portland, Oregon. And I discovered them through Maya Wynn who was on Sonic Dorms not too long ago, was a fantastic guest uh, to have. And through her, now Dreadlight. So thank you so much for coming on the show and giving me the time day to, to do this with you. Really appreciate it. Yeah, we're really happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so just for starters, you are in Portland, Oregon at the moment. Yes. Okay. Awesome. And just, just like in, like actually in, in Portland? Um, we're technically 30 minutes south um, on the outskirts. It's still a metro area, but it's not like in Portland, Portland, you know. Now, your your latest single really uh, caught me off guard because I didn't know what to expect. And I always go into listening to music with an open mind, of course. You know, I'm, I'm an eclectic music fanatic. Uh, when I first heard She, which is this incredible anthem, this super awesome, empowering uh, you know, anthem, I believe, um, not just for females, but I believe just, I mean, I was empowered listening to it. I, I, oh, awesome. yeah. So, I mean, very strong, probably I've listened to the three EPs that you put out, uh, in 2019 after that, uh, which are very, uh, they were varied, I believe in, in the material and they all, they, all three of them, it was like a trilogy with each with its own individual theme attached to it. Yeah, but this was probably like the most brutal sounding thing that I think I've heard <laughs> overall, just based on the overarching uh, catalog here that you have thus far. Yeah. Um, oh, boy. It's funny because we actually wrote that song quite a while ago. Yeah, years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it's gone through like so many different um, evolutions. Like you, you you wrote it <laughs> yeah yeah in middle school I wrote it actually um about a girl who tried to steal my guy and I wasn't happy about it it was actually a really angry song towards this girl and as I grew up I kind of grew out of that mindset and I didn't really want to put this woman hating song into the world um so we're like what if we just flip it on its head and write something that's kind of completely the opposite um, and that's how she came to be. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, think that it, it the only thing that, that I have to say about it, and I've, I've read the comments, which I shouldn't do that, I normally don't, but I was just curious to see how other people were reacting to it. And it all seemed very positive, but I think the one complaint we all had, including myself, was that it's only like two minutes and seven seconds. Yeah. And I'm like, I oh, that a lot. It's, <laughs> it's great. It's great because it leaves you wanting more, which I love that, but um yeah, I'm like, I wanted more of that. That was so good. So <laughs> thank you. Yeah, we've definitely heard that a lot. Um, and we considered making it longer, but uh, for whatever reason, it felt right for us to keep it at, yeah, two minutes, I think it is. Yeah, <laughs> really short. So short. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe it could be like that ultimate closer, if you think about it, like, mm. uh, uh, and your set list, like if you ever right. do, like, you know, at the very end, just end it with that it's such a banger, you know, just yeah. end it with that. And so it's, it's done. I think it's a great, like closing, like goodbye, everybody. Thanks for joining us kind of song. Right. It's like right. a period. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I like, especially for first time guests on Sonic Dorms, I like getting to the root of um, the artist's origin story, hmm. if you will. So if you, I'm sure you've been asked this before, but just for anybody uh, that watches this, that isn't familiar with Dreadlight uh, in your history, where did it all begin? Oh man, we first met um, in a music class in high school uh, called Band Project. And it's very similar to uh, the movie School of Rock. It's that total type of class. Um, and our teacher was very enthusiastic about us collaborating, um, though we were both so incredibly shy at the time. And I remember the first time I heard Toria sing, I was like, you sound really good. And she's like, thanks. <laughs> she did not think she sounded good. Um, and it took a long time of warming up for us to come out of our shells enough to be friends and to start collaborating. But it was really that class that started it all. Yeah, that's like how we really got started with everything from just playing music at all to like meeting each other for the first time. And like, it's like so many things like started there. Yeah, totally. I, that was the first time I ever played bass. 
Um, and I didn't really get formal instruction, but my teacher's like, you can play a guitar, you can play bass, just go grab it and do it. I'm like, I don't know how. <laughs> it's like, you'll figure it out, just try. You gotta start. That's awesome. I um, Prior, you said that was like the first time you were picking up your respective instruments, uh, but what drove that home for you? Were you avid music listeners like prior to that? Were you like fans of certain albums and artists that inspired you early on? Um, I, my family has always been slightly musical. Like my guitar that I play the most now is my dad's. Um, you can kind of see the butt of it hanging on the wall over there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, just a cherry strat. Um, and, but we didn't really like listen to much music, but when I like became like an angsty, like ninth grader, I started to get into like heavier music and I was like, oh man, I want to play music. And it kind of just spiral yeah. from there <laughs> my family wasn't um musical in terms of being musicians themselves but uh, they had some close family friends that did like a beatles cover band an oldies cover band and they came and rehearsed at our house a lot and my brother at you know eight nine ten years old would sing with them and that was kind of my first exposure and i fell in love with the beatles through them um and then you know when i became 10, 11, 12, I fell in love with Taylor Swift. And that's really what got me into music. I'm like, I really need to learn guitar. I need to write songs. I want to be Taylor Swift. Um, so I forced my dad to teach me to play guitar and my brother helped a little bit too. Um, and then I just, yeah, I, I started learning Taylor Swift songs and like I would take forever to change chords, but I was so excited and so dedicated that I would sit there for hours, like stumbling through these songs, learning how to play oh. guitar. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how I fell in love in the beginning. You know, I hear a, one of the like biggest things that I enjoy about listening to your songs, the, the ones that you've released thus far, that is, is the vocal harmony approach that you bring to this. A lot of vocal harmonies. And I've always loved those bands that, you know, do a lot of harmonies, like the Beatles with John and Paul, and even like, let's say a later example with Alice in Chains with like Elaine Staley oh, yeah. and Jerry Cantrell. They blending, yeah, their voices just blend so well together. And it seems here like we have that here uh, with the two of you. you. Your voices blend so well that it's almost hard to um, to make like say like pick it apart because they just blend like like it's just such a wonderful hybrid of these two angelic voices. Dare I say? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's incredible. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. We both love to sing, um, and so from the early stages, we really wanted that to be. Um, a primary part of our sound is uh, the vocals and vocal harmony in general. Yeah, it's funny because just today I was practicing to some of our tracks, um, just like what we have on Spotify. I was just listening to our recordings. And as I was practicing, I had to stop. I'm like, am I singing the right harmony right now? Like, I couldn't <laughs> tell. I was like, who's this part? Is this? part? Yeah. I had funny. to like listen for a while. <laughs> is that something that took a long time for you to get accustomed to learning like the learning the vocal harmony process and getting that in tip-top shape um I think the biggest thing was just getting comfortable enough in front of each other to sing really but yeah I feel like just from the beginning of our friendship we were always just like in the car just like harmonizing yeah. with each other like <laughs> yeah singing random things yeah yeah I feel like it's always been relatively easy but yeah, yeah like you said just getting uh warming up to it sharing something so vulnerable as singing or like new songs was really hard yeah right and also i've noticed that um as far as your lyrical content is concerned it's very at least to my ears comes off as very personal and very uh very um intense as far as like it, it touches on a lot of strong uh topics that i think uh, a lot of people can relate to which i think uh things about the human condition and whatnot at least that's what i got out of it so i love that it, um it, i think that's something that is underestimated sometimes i mean beyond the song craft i think people that can relate to something lyrically i think and make it their own in relation to their own lives i think that is music that is going to stand the test of time just because of that fact alone and you you bring that to the table so is that is that exactly what you're going for some to create that almost intimate personal experience when you write lyrics yeah first of all thank you <laughs> yeah and, absolutely um I think it's just kind of the way it's always been because like songwriting I think for both of us kind of just started off as like 
journal entries like as like a sort of therapy to help deal with what we're feeling or going through um and then we're like well maybe we could do something with these you yeah. know and like um yeah it's it's always been it's just whatever really comes out yeah I couldn't agree more <laughs> Was it a long um, starting process between you getting together, starting Dreadlight, and and getting to that point where you finally believed enough in the material that you decided to release it? Was it was there a long uh, gestation period between the moment you met and that moment? I think the first few years um, was a lot of slow growth. We didn't really know what we wanted to do. Uh, we knew we wanted to collaborate somehow, and we're like, let's have a band that'd be so fun. Um, and having a drummer was always really hard. We've been through a lot of drummers, um, but gosh, I sorry, I just blanked. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, yeah, slow growth in the beginning, um, and then we made a lot of really crappy recordings just to get things out. So I feel like it didn't take a long time for us to want to put things out, but it took a while for them to be decent enough to take off. Yeah, We have a lot of like, you know, we had our first self-titled EP, but before that we had a ton of home recordings, uh, SoundCloud yeah. recordings that were just really bad. <laughs> yeah, it, it took a while, I think, because like all most of the songs that we've released so far are things that we wrote like all through like the band project days and like, you know, when we were first getting started, but it's just like, you know getting refining them and like going to different people like we've worked with like performance coaches and like different producers that we wanted to like help get like our chops up and you know make these songs better you know so it's been it's definitely been a long time coming for, yeah. for what we have out there right yeah, now for definitely sure. Yeah, I always have an immense amount of respect towards any sort of artist in, in, in any field, that is, who dedicates that towards that 10,000 hour principle philosophy that you got to put your, you got to put the work in, you got to, you know, it all starts with a dream, but we all have to put the work in. I think um, a lot of artists are just, we're, we see nowadays with social media, a lot of artists kind of develop in front of our eyes second by second, but mm -hmm. I miss the days where they, people kind of stayed shut in until they were ready to show you what they had and when they were fully developed. And uh, it sounds to me like that's what you did. You 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 really worked on your craft and you waited till the moment was right. And you kind of had your own filter as far as knowing what was good and maybe what wasn't as good. And you weren't too precious about your, your original ideas and you developed them until a point that you felt comfortable enough to release them to the world. And therefore the music is brilliant. It, it sounds... <laughs> It sounds fleshed out, matured, and and fantastic. And all the respect to you for that. I think that's amazing. Yeah, thank you very much. I think there was also like some experiences that kind of forced us out of our comfort comfort zone in a little bit, which was good because we were obviously both very shy. <laughs> like when we did sound off. Mm -hmm. we, I think the biggest thing for that and like getting everything out was that we didn't have a drummer at the time. And so we had to like record all these drums to play live with. Yeah. And like, I don't think we would have, that process wouldn't have gone so quickly and, and taken super seriously. I don't think if we hadn't had that need, yeah. you know? And I think there's a lot of that just like, you know, an opportunity comes up and you have to kind of like meet the opportunity and yeah. say yes and figure out how to do it later. Yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah, there's right. a lot of that. It's great. I speaking of like not taking yourselves too seriously, I also happened to stumble when I was going down the rabbit hole of of your music on these cover songs that you you've worked on uh, for a while now. Uh, some with Maya, and uh, one of them being the uh, your take on the Hex Girls thing, which yeah, I think is yeah. really cool. Uh, and you bringing that to life and, and the music video was really well fleshed out. I, I loved it. I, I thought that was really cool. It shows that you have like a, almost like a tongue in cheek side to, to, mm -hmm. to you. So I think that's really cool. I really dug that. Yeah, that was really fun. Yeah. I think that was my favorite project actually. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah. Getting to do stuff like that, like take something from like a literal cartoon and like bring it to life and like put our own twist on it in parts and 
it just worked out, you know, because there's the three of us and the three yeah. of the hex girls, and like it was just so fun. It yeah, was really, really a fun. lot of people had said that we reminded them of the hex girls. They're like, you have to do the hex girls. <laughs> um, but yeah, working with Maya is always super fun. She's, you know, obviously incredibly talented, but also like the actual nicest person I've ever met. Like mm -hmm. she's a total sweetheart. Um, and working with her is always a breeze and always really inspiring. So I'm super grateful that we get to do projects with her. Yeah, I mean, um, you seem to like, again, it seems like uh, you guys like blend together really well when you work together, when you collaborate. And I think that's really, it's genuine. It looks genuine. I think even to an outsider, it looks genuine because it is. <laughs> Good, thank you. Yeah, and uh, you did a cover of "Good for You" by uh, you know the song by Olivia Rodrigo, which I'm always already a fan of that record, uh, the debut album "Sour," which came out earlier this year, and that song in particular was a uh, quite an, quite an anthemic, uh, you know, kind of song, and I love that song. I love your take on that. I, I thought that was great as well. Thank you. Yeah, um, hearing all the comparisons to Misery Business um, was really funny and also uh, kind of inspired us to work on this cover. We even contemplated doing a full mashup of both songs. Um, we ended up settling uh, and doing just uh, Good For You, but that was also really fun. And I feel like really different than a lot of the other things we've done. Um, yeah. We've never covered like a, I don't know, it's not straight up pop, but she kind of fits in the pop vein. She's, you know, obviously very popular. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was kind of also the first project that I feel like we, kind of almost completely did on our own yeah like most of the stuff we've done has been like a collaboration or you know behind the scenes like working with other people to like get their opinion of like do you think this would be best or right. something but I feel like on this one it was definitely like like we had a really amazing um cinematographer mm -hmm. that uh worked with us on that and he had a lot of great ideas that really made it come to life but you know, it, it was definitely the most uh, involved for us, yeah. I'd say. Like, yeah, and he really also invited us to share our own vision and to honor our vision a lot on that project, which we really mm -hmm. appreciate. Um, yeah, it was really fun in that aspect. Yeah, yeah that was so fun. No, that's really cool. Yeah, I, I really dug that. And uh, I, I would like to ask you, I'm, I'm asking this of anybody that's a, a younger up and coming artist, um, how have you managed the last year and and how are you um how did you bide your time as far as like did you continue to remain creative in that down period uh you obviously didn't let it stop you which is great because we need growth we need good music and we need music music is is powerful it really is it can be a, a really powerful thing and it still is and we need music and we need artists such as yourselves and we really do and uh i applaud you for keeping it alive and, and keeping going strong really it means the world to me i mean that's part of the reason why i started doing this thing a year ago the show because i wanted to create a platform for artists that i feel maybe need to be spoken to more often and need a platform to speak because i think connecting with artists especially the younger artists out there they need that platform still and we don't have the gatekeepers the mtv anymore none of that so i think between social media is one thing but i think we need uh some we need more of it i think there's not enough there's not enough and i think um so with that being said how have you navigated that time and and how has it impacted you uh into today i personally um was suffering from a lot of burnout towards the end of I guess the you know right before the beginning of the pandemic um, and I was just starting to overcome that and you know we'd spent we've spent a lot of years with these songs and with the three EPs we have um, and while I love them and they feel like my children <laughs> um, you know when you when you play those same songs so much and you hear them so much uh, it kind of I don't know it, it takes the magic away a little bit and so I feel like the pandemic for me was a much needed break from that and from performing the same songs. Um, and, you know, I, I didn't force myself to write a ton. I didn't force myself to practice a ton. I just kind of took the time personally to get some space and to kind of grow as a person outside of, you know, Dreadlight and outside of the music. Um, and I think that really helped me find my love for it again and find my passion and um, and to feel really ready to jump right back into it. Yeah, I, I feel pretty much the same way. Like, you know, it was, it was weird, like the timing, cause like 
you know, at the end of 2019, we had released all of these EPs throughout that year. And then, you know, we, we had just sent a bunch of like flights to these different music conventions and stuff um, to try and do like networking. And then, um, then the pandemic hit and it was like, you know, we just went from like super busy to like all of a sudden there's nothing. And like, it was really nice. And like, to be able to focus on other things and like granted there's a bunch of other things going on in our heads yeah. at the time anyways but yeah I mean there was definitely times where I felt inspired just by what was going on in the world and so I'd like pick up my guitar but oh, oh that happens sometimes it's okay <laughs> no worries all right no worries it's like what happened <laughs> <laughs> bye that's good no no they didn't like being on the show <laughs> oh well um what was I saying? <laughs> um, I felt really inspired to pick up your guitar just by what's going on in the world. It was a nice break. Yeah, it was a nice break. And um, oh my god, I completely lost my train of thought. It's okay. It's yeah, okay. Yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just nice. <laughs> it's nice. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's like you said, like it's nice to get back into it again and like it has been hard to kind of like get back into the swing of things like I feel like I've been telling people like oh just getting back into the swing of things for like the past year <laughs> yeah right <laughs> um yeah because like you know it's just been all over the place with like you know shows and like mandates and stuff and what's allowed and so yeah. uh we're like yeah we're gonna start playing shows and we're like maybe next we're, we're not, not. Yeah. so not. <laughs> it's like slim pickings and like we try to be as prepared as we can for each one but um yeah just like kind of been rolling with a punch <laughs> yes yeah I feel like it's also kind of you know just a nice breather in between you know the first era of our music and yeah. a lot of what we have to come you know we've over the pandemic um though we didn't force ourselves, we did end up, you know, writing more and have um, a lot of new material that we're super excited about and that feels um, matured from our last stuff, even, um, and a little different and, and really exciting. Uh, are you, would you say musically you're going to continue, even though it's like a rebirth of sorts, it sounds like, do you think it's going to still be varied as far as like where you're going to go musically? Yeah, I think the core of what we do is always got that same feel to it but there's definitely ways that we want to like expand and like experiment with different instruments and you know just based on what I've observed like our songwriting is different like when I go back mm -hmm. and listen to our older lyrics versus the ones that we write now like there's like a maturity there that's different yeah um and like you know we're definitely still like honing our skills and like our songwriting skills. So I think there's just like a lot of growth. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the core of what we are doing is still the same. Hopefully yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see, see when we record them. We'll let, as, we'll let whatever happens happen. Well, as like, as, um, how do I word this? So like, are you still, about I know it's a different day and age for a lot of music listeners especially younger ones don't have the attention span really to sit through an entire album anymore unfortunately that's just the generation that it is but I am of the old school and I grew up listening to records I mean even even though I'm a 90s you know baby but I grew up like that was just the way it was like oh yeah here's even as a CD it's like I'm gonna listen to this whole thing yeah. front to back and I love to me albums are like films almost like to me I like going on a journey I like I'm a nerd I like the sequencing and all that I like that track three is where it is you know and I like that the yeah. final song the closing song it's almost like a set list right, right. so yeah, totally. I still dig that and I respect artists who still make albums and as much as I like EPs I like that album format just because to me that's it's like I'm watching a film that's the idea is like or I'm reading a great novel I'm like to me the album the art of the album is something that while it's fine, I get it. You want to lessen that for real music lovers such as myself. I like artists that still continue to carry that tradition and believe in the art of the album. Do you believe in the art of the album? And do you think you'll eventually get to that point where you'll make an entire LP? We've been talking about 
making an album for a long time. That yeah. was always a dream. Yeah. Um, and we were planning for our first EPs to be one album. And I, I kind of consider them one album, but broken up into three parts. Um, but uh, in terms of the reach that it gets and, you know, the amount of, I don't know, um, in terms of, yeah, the marketing aspect of it, EPs really can really help uh, in this day and age for smaller artists. So that's why mm-hmm. we ended up making that decision. Mm-hmm. Um, but someday I would love to make an oh album. My God. <laughs> of course. Like my dream is to make a concept album someday. I feel like that would be really, really cool. Um, and you know, like the old school days when you just, you go book a studio or like a mountain retreat yeah. somewhere for like a month. And then you just write and record it that yeah. entire time. And like, that's it. Like it's a, it's a yeah. very concentrated Man, experience. I'd love to be able to afford that yeah, <laughs> or afford to take the time to do that. Yeah, that's the dream for sure. Yeah. Yeah, here's like here's like five million dollars. Go away yeah. for like yeah. a month and go do whatever oh you need God. to do and come back with a record to like an entire album's worth of material yeah. for us. Don't think about anything else. Yeah. Don't yeah. worry about getting food on the table. That's incredible. But it sounds like your hearts are in the right place and you do you are, you know, wishing towards that eventually happening and happening at some point in that yeah. sort of old school manner, which is pretty awesome. And I I'm like, yes, concept album, because I'm a huge concept album lover. So that sounds really cool to me. It's not honestly, like for me, I get this idea that you're going to grow musically and this like dreadlight's going to grow musically in this awesomely, like just expansive way. There's going to be this dexterity in your music at some point that I mean, it's already I can hear glimpses of it already. There's there's moments where I'm like, wow, I can see this going on for like dare I say like some progginess happening at some point oh, here like yeah, where you go into yeah. this like three four minute breakdown in a song that's like seven minutes long or something <laughs> I can hear that happening it's just like it's there right the talent's there so I I, uh, I really can't wait to see what the future holds for Dreadlight really yeah thank you I'm really excited <laughs> yeah keeping doors open for that yeah for sure <laughs> So what is there anything that is upcoming uh, before the end of 2021 that you would like to uh, discuss? Um, well, <laughs> Halloween is upon us. Yeah, I'm not sure when um, this podcast will be out for the world. Um, but it'll, it'll probably be out in about two days. So Oh, uh, oh nice. Uh, Perfect. What day is it today? Is it Wednesday? Yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. Oh. So... Um, you want to give a date? Yeah. On Sunday, we're releasing uh, a second Hex Girls video and song. Yeah. Um, really? We've been working really hard on. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Really hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's been a yeah, straight grind. Yeah. Um, but sure. yeah, we worked again with Maya. Um, and yeah, it's been super fun. We're really excited about it. Wow, that's exciting. I saw some like BTS like on Instagram, but I was like, is that what I think it is? <laughs> Guess it, it is. is. Yep, yep. <laughs> that's awesome. I can't wait to see that. And uh, so the video will be online Sunday then, this Sunday. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it'll be on um, Spotify and all the different streaming and digital stores yeah. and YouTube. Um, yeah. Yep. All the places. All right. Awesome. Hey, Kendra, Tori, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on Sonic Dorms. I, you will always have this as a platform. If you're, you're always welcome back. If you'd like to come back, uh, this is, I did this for you. Like this platform's here for whenever you guys, whenever you want to have something to bring up, uh, Sonic Dorms is here for you really. So I really awesome. appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. We yeah. appreciate it. This was really. super fun. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Really. That means a lot. Seriously. Well, anyway, so thanks, thanks for coming on the show, and uh, I can't wait to hear the the new Hex Girl single, like because I love the the last one, obviously. And uh, until next time, and obviously, um, keep on rocking, keep doing what you do. Seriously, don't give up. I like dread, like you just have to continue. Seriously, dreadlight needs to continue. So, by all <laughs> means, carry on and and like don't stop driving that home because uh, we need artists such as yourselves to continue doing what you do best. Really. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you thank you so much really appreciate it yeah all right so until next time all right take care all righty bye <laughs>